Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Today we're looking at finding exact values um, for angles given in radians. So we've done this before with degrees, but now we're learning about radians. So we're gonna do this again. Uh, our first question has sine of two pi over three. So we know two pi over three is an angle measurement given in radians. The first thing we always wanna do is get the visual of where that angle, two pi over three, lands in the Cartesian plane. So I'm gonna do a little rough sketch here for my Cartesian plane, and I'm going to plot that two pi over three. Now we're dealing with radians, so if it's hard for you to imagine where that angle goes, Remember we start on the positive x-axis and we work counterclockwise, just like we do with degrees. Half of the circle is pi radians. If we want two-thirds of a pi, then we're gonna take the pi radians and break it up into thirds. So if I start here and I break this up into thirds, it will look something like this. Okay, so there's one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, which gives me the full pi radians there. So two-thirds of a pi is going to be one, two-thirds of that pi radians. So here is the terminal arm of our angle, two pi over three. So now, based on that sketch, what we really want to work with always is the related acute angle. And so right here, that angle, we can call that alpha for the related acute angle, is what we really want to do our calculations. So if this was two-thirds of a pi, and this whole thing is one pi, then that little bit must be one-third of a pi. So this related acute angle I'm gonna write as pi over three. That's one third, sorry, of a pi. Okay, so now to get the exact value for this sine value, here, what I'm really gonna look at is sine of the related acute angle. So sine of pi over three in the second quadrant. Now in the second quadrant is important for our positive and negative values. We'll look at the casserole at the end. Sine of pi over three. So if we want exact values, we know we need to be using our special triangles, or you can use your values if you have a unit circle uh, handy with a special value, a special angles on it, but we're gonna use the special triangles today. So I've written them both here. Okay, if we're looking for sine of pi over three, I'm not gonna use this triangle because this one is for pi over four. I'm gonna use this one here. There's my pi over three. So sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, root three over two. And there's my exact value for sine of pi over three, root three over two. We get that directly from the special triangle. All right, so the last thing we wanna do is check our cast rule. Um, we know that in the second quadrant, which is what we're working in, the sine ratio is positive, so this value of root three over two is gonna remain exactly as it is, positive. And there it is, the exact value for our original sine two pi over three. You'll notice how our special triangles remain the same as they were with degrees. We've just changed the angles to radians now. So here on this special triangle, this was 45 degrees, which is the same as pi over four. And that was 45 degrees, which is the same as pi over four. And then down here, pi over three was 60 degrees, and pi over six is 30 degrees. But all of the values here in our triangles remain the same. We're just converting those units. Okay, so let's do this again now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, with the second question. So now we have a tangent of 11 pi over six. So just like before, we want to take that 11 pi over six angle and put it onto the Cartesian plane so that we can get a visual of where it lands. So I'm going to do my Cartesian plane roughly here. And I'm looking for 11 pi over six. So now, remember pi is always half the circle. 
I want 11 sixths of pi. So I'm gonna break up one pi, that's the half circle, into sixths, and then I'm gonna count out 11 of them. So if I break this into six, if I start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, I need more than one pi, right? I need 11 sixths, that's more than one pi, so I'm gonna keep going. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now I've broken up the two pi into six, so I have 12 sixths here. I want 11 sixths, so starting in the positive x, I'm gonna go around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 sixths. So right there is 11 sixths of a pi. So there's 11 pi over six. Okay, so now if that's where the terminal arm is for my angle, I know that to do my calculations, I really need to look at the related acute angle. So this is what I wanna look at here. And the related acute um, angle value, if all the way around here is 11 sixths, then right here, that's gonna be one sixth. We have one sixth left to complete that circle. So my related acute angle is one sixth of pi, which is pi over six here. So this tells me then that tangent of 11 pi over six is the same thing as tangent of pi over six in the fourth quadrant. So that's gonna help us with our cast rule after. So now, tangent of pi over six. If I look at my special triangle, I'm gonna look at this one again. There's the angle, pi over six. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my value is gonna be one over root three. There's the exact value, like this. And if we look at the cast rule, in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. So tangent is negative. I'm gonna add my negative in here. And there's the exact value for tangent of 11 pi over six. Now, we often rationalize this denominator. That means we get rid of that radical. To get rid of a radical in the denominator, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by that radical. So if we multiply by root three over root three, then we end up with the negative root three over three. And so that's the rationalized answers, but these are both the same, the same value. Thanks for watching, Mrs. A Loves Math.